everyone and welcome to our latest Global Outlook video from Economist Intelligence Unit. My name is Agathe de Marais, I'm the Global Forecasting Director at EIU. I'm joined today by Nick Maro, our Lead for Global Trade and China Analyst based in Hong Kong. Today we're going to discuss Russia-China relations in the context of war in Ukraine, taking a look at what kind of support China can give to Russia. So Nick, I'm going to turn to you for a first scene-setting question. What would you say China can realistically do for Russia? Are Chinese companies sensing any opportunities in Russia? Sure. Well, when we think about economic support overall, we're expecting it to be relatively limited. And that's primarily because Western sanctions make the story here very complicated. Fundamentally, we need to realize that even if the Chinese government has criticized the international measures against Russia, it doesn't mean that Chinese companies and banks won't abide by them. And that's really the key idea here. Access to US and European markets, and more significantly, access to the US dollar, is still incredibly important for Chinese companies, more so than any opportunities in expanding their market footprint in Russia. We should also remember that the Russian market right now is very unattractive. We're expecting a 10% decline in GDP growth in 2022, with a lot of that pain concentrated in the consumer retail and business landscape. And this is adding to a lot of the deficiencies in the local business environment that EIU has been tracking for years, such as problems around corruption and red tape. As a result, this suggests that we might need to see some Chinese state-led directives to facilitate this cooperation, and that organic commercial interests might not be as strong as some observers might be expecting. So with all that in mind, what are the specific sectors that you and the EIU's China team are tracking in terms of areas where you think cooperation could take place? Well, in our view, energy looks like the most obvious area particularly given that this industry is already dominated in China by state-owned firms, so playing to that idea I just mentioned of political directives. We should also mention the fact that Western sanctions haven't yet touched these industries, so there's still some room for growth, but there are important caveats here. So first, there's considerable anxiety that the West will eventually move to sanction Russian oil and gas. Chinese companies by nature are very risk averse, as evidenced by some Chinese commercial banks already having halted or suspended the Russian commodities trading activities. So we might see a little bit of a wait and see attitude here. Secondly, there's a question around how much of Russian energy production can Chinese capacity realistically absorb, given existing infrastructure constraints in China, as well as the fact that China prefers to keep a relatively diversified energy import mix as part of its broader energy security goals. Another area we're looking at is around technology, given the US, EU, and other international export controls that threaten to upset a lot of the technology shipments to Russia. China might be able to play a role here, but it will mostly be in low to medium range segments of the supply chain, given the US and EU dominance in the upstream parts of the supply chain, particularly in those very innovative products. Now, we're less positive about deepening cooperation in the financial services sphere owing primarily to the primacy of the US dollar and to a lesser extent the euro in facilitating international business activity. The renminbi, or alternatively, various digital currencies just simply aren't at usage levels internationally to replace uh, this in the short term. So the common thread that links all this together, however, is this idea of secondary sanctions, which are US sanctions imposed on entities that don't respect the original primary sanctions. This is a topic which actually goes beyond just Russia and China and touches on China's increasingly strained relationship with the West more broadly. Thanks, Nick. And I'm going to ask you a final question, actually, because you've just mentioned uh, US and EU relations. How do Russia-China relations have an impact on China's relations with, say, the US and the EU? Well, we see these dynamics as quite impactful, actually. So China's stance over Ukraine is really worsening its ties with the US, not only because of China's increasingly explicit support of Russia's invasion, but also because it is almost solely focused on blaming the US and NATO for the crisis. None of the recent engagements that we've seen between the US and China uh, in recent weeks, including at the presidential level, have really suggested any kind of breakthrough on this front. But this carries wider reputational implications as well. China's sole focus on blaming the US for the war while avoiding almost any mention or discussion of Russian aggression is not playing well with European audiences who now see Russia as an existential threat. This is a miscalculation that threatens to undo a multi-year diplomatic strategy by the Chinese aimed at deepening its relations with the EU, partially to offset worsening ties with the US and to address concerns of a US-backed coalition forming against China. The repeating of Russian propaganda by Chinese state media and increasingly some Chinese officials in particular is really not doing China any diplomatic favors here. But these events are now pointing to an increasingly irreconcilable divide between Russia and the Western-led order. And this really risks accelerating and deepening the existing geopolitical and economic factors that we're seeing today, suggesting a much wider, a much more long-term uh, 
the slew of consequences of the war in Ukraine that many observers might not have originally anticipated. Thanks so much, Nick, for his brilliant overview of Russia-China relations in the context of war in Ukraine. We're at the end of the video now. You can always find our latest analysis on our website, www.eau.com. Thanks for watching us and see you next month. Thank you. Goodbye.